Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Kala Script In. Um, today is the second of Sunweight, so uh, let's just start off together by lighting the second candle. So this is my arrangement. <laughs> I've got some. Uh, uh, I've got my bind rune for the year here. It's a bind rune on this. It's going to be burnt on the winter solstice because that's when I've, uh, I make a bind rune each year by around the spring equinox. And uh, it's for my highest good. Um, sometimes I might make one in another purpose for another purpose but this one is for my highest good over the year and I decided to keep it uh, close by like on my altar or workspace so it's been on like a tray of candles and other stuff for the entire year and then I have some um, some towers this is like bumblebee jasper and uh, carnelian a lovely carnelian and uh, then i have my selenite uh, that's english word right so i chose these to have on my uh, in my arrangement for my sunweight candles because bumblebee always makes me want to like dance, feel joy and it reminds me of the winter solstice and the sun returning because that's what we're waiting for we're waiting for the sun to return and then the carnelian is uh, this one especially is um, a representation of both the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine so i wanted both of those represented and then the selenite is to clear space and balance the energies in this uh, in this space. So I am sitting on our couch today because I, it's too cold by the window where I was last week. It's since you last saw me, it's uh, become winter where I'm at. So here I am <laughs> in the couch, on the couch, in the couch, on the couch. So um or so i mean <laughs> um today i think we will uh, uh, i will share the same med the cleansing meditation like last time so if you don't want to do that with me you can just skip ahead and then i'm gonna draw a rune for the coming week for you guys for me for the time between the second and the third sun weight. But first we're gonna light our candles. So I'm turning my tray. And I have my... I do have a candle lit in the middle of the arrangement, but I'm gonna light Ur or Urus first. So I have Urus here. And then the second one is Tush or Thurisas, because as you know, I light the first six candles of the Uthar. Sorry for the noise. So this is the one for today. There you see it. A bit clearer. Thurisas or Tush. I prefer to use the Swedish names of the runes. Which makes sense also because uh, uh, Tush is uh, the name, uh, the, the ancient name of giants. So the ancient Nordic name of giants. And uh, this rune is the rune of giants. And the rune of the lower world called Jutenheim, which is, which is where the giants live. 
and uh, in the map of cosmos inside of us it's where we keep it's the world within us where we build the um, obstacles for ourselves or and it's uh, where self-sabotage lives and uh, self-destruction all of those wonderful qualities and uh, properties that we really really need in, in life uh, we do need them we do need them so uh, nothing is all bad but mostly we need to learn how to be our own giant and lift the stones from our path that we have put there for ourselves so giants have a lot to teach us and we need to befriend our inner giant so we can remove our the obstacles that we set for ourselves in our own way so make yourself comfortable We're gonna do some meditating. I hope you can hear me. I'm gonna move this. Take it with me. Maybe to here. I don't know. <laughs> it has to be like steady. Can it be steady? Do I have something to put it on? Maybe a book. Maybe, maybe like that. No, I now I can't hear myself. So let's see. Yeah, yeah, that's that's probably gonna. I hope you can hear me. Can I hear me? Yeah, I can hear me. <laughs> okay, so mm. we're gonna open, we're gonna start by opening our Viracocha's. Viracocha is not something Nordic, it's uh, from the Kiro medicine, the Inca shamanism. But I like the practice, so that's why I'm doing it. You don't have to do it with me, but I'm going to do it. So I'm going to open my Viracocha, which is my eighth chakra, and uh, meditate inside of it and clear the energy inside of it before I start my day. So remember, this is, uh, this is something you can do before or after the, your day, so you can do it to start your day or to end your day. I'm just gonna have to, I can't pause because I'm too far away. So you're gonna just have to watch me text my cousin back. We were gonna do some practice driving. <laughs> that he's cancelling, so. Okay, short answer. I'm sorry for keep you waiting, for keeping you waiting. Okay. So hands to our hearts in prayer position and uh, it's good if you can keep it so close that you can like feel your heart beat through your chest and onto the hands, the side of the hand. So like just concentrate on your heart beating. So breathe normally for a moment. Listen to your heart. I'm sorry if you can hear my clock.
And when you can hear your heart beat, you're going to take a deep breath in. From your bottom to your head and then breathe out and land in your heart. Keep listening to your heart beat. Breathe in. And on the next breath, we're going to raise our hands above our head, keeping them in prayer position, and then we breathe out and separate them and look and start looking for our rear cushion. Breathe in and raise. Breathe out and separate. And then pull your hands towards each other and pull them away from each other and towards and away until you can feel the energy between your hands. Like you're holding a ball and you are, you're holding a ball of light, a a ball of energy that is your eighth chakra. It can be way up here where mine is, so it can be closer to your head, it can be small, it can be big. When you found it, imagine you can put your hands inside of it with your palms facing outwards and pulling down the viracocha around you. So hands inside of it and bring it down, stepping inside of it from uh, from below until it's all around you, until you are sitting inside of your golden bubble, your viracocha, and then just rest your hands in your on your lap or your knee palms facing downward I'm gonna open this little window or hatch or whatever you want to call it at the top of the bubble and let the purple light in the purple light of cosmos that clears the energies inside of your bubble clears the energies inside of your mind and soul and physical body so let the purple light in let it surround you let it in through your crown chakra welcome it into your into your mind and head down your throat welcome it into your heart lungs and arms down your spine into your stomach and belly all the way down to your root your root chakra and your root tail and let the tail that is a root grow downwards making its way through whatever you are sitting on through the building you are sitting in through the ground, the floor and then the ground, through layers upon layers of bedrock and water, all the way down to the earth mother's heart. And feel her heart beat at the same pace as yours. So focus on the heart. And then move your awareness back to your root chakra. And let the purple light feel your legs, your feet and the roots that stem from your feet and let let them make their way the same way as the tail root through whatever you are sitting on, through the building you are sitting in, through the floor, through the ground, through the bedrock, pockets of water, all the way down to the earth mother's heart.
Feel her heart beating at the same pace as yours. And then we put, put our awareness at the top of our crown again. So that we can take some deep breaths together and release all of this negative energy that has been absorbed by the purple light. And give it to the Earth Mother. So we're going to start by, we're going to inhale light. So we're going to, as we are releasing the purple light, we are going to welcome a bright, clear light from the from Father Sky through the little hatch or window or hole at the top of our bubble. So I want you to welcome this light into your crown chakra so that you can breathe it in. And then when you breathe out, I want you to release the purple light and let it just make its way down to the earth mother bit by bit, step by step. Like you're sitting in a pool and the water is, is, um, is going out at the bottom. So breathe in light and on the first breath out, we're going to release all the purple light and then all the negative energy. We're going to sense that the, the, the purple light around us descends from the top of our head down to our collarbones. So breathe in white light. And breathe out and release. The purple light is now resting by your collarbone and your head is filled with the bright light. And so is the bubble around you, above your collarbone. And on the next breath we're going to empty our hearts our lungs, our arms, and our hands of this purple light and replace it with bright white light from the Father's sky. So breathe in white light and breathe out and release. And on the next, uh, on the next breath, we're going to release all of the purple light from our spines and our stomach down to our belly buttons and the purple light around us is gonna draw back down to the level of the of the navel so breathe in white light breathe out the release and let go And on the next breath, we're going to release all the purple light in our stomach and our bum and our root chakra and our root tail. Breathe in white light. Breathe out and release and let go. Release all the way down the root to the earth mother's heart. And then pull your awareness back to the root chakra. And on the next breath, we're going to empty our legs and our feet. Breathe in white light. Breathe out the release. And let go. We have two more deep breaths left. On the next one, we're going to empty our bubble. Imagine it's a bathtub and there is some purple light left at the bottom and it's going to be released through, through the hole in the bottom all the way down to the earth mother's heart. Breathe in white light. Breathe out the release. And on the last breath, we're going to release all the purple light that are left in our roots. All of the root system down to the Earth Mother's heart. And replace it with white bright light from Father Sky. 
Breathe in white light. And breathe out and let go. Focus on the Earth Mother's heart and her beating, the beating heart. See her heart pulsating under you in the middle of the Earth. And for every beat of her heart, new energy, you can give it a color, a grounding color, and receive this energy and this color from the earth mother for every beat of her heart receive it in your roots so focus on her on the heart beating and not your breath just breathe normally and receive the earth mother's energy in your feet and your legs in your root chakra in your spine and your stomach. In your heart and your lungs. Your shoulders and your arms. Hands and fingertips. And you can put your hands with your palms facing upwards. And receive the Earth Mother's love and her energy in your throat and neck, strengthening all of the bones and muscles inside of you. Welcome her medicine of stability and safety. And feel the energy in your head, all the way up to your crown. And when it reaches to your crown, it flows over, filling your bubble, mixing with the, earth, the Sky Father's energy, the white bright light, forming rainbows within your bubble, rainbows of energy, of light, of strength. And on the next deep breath, I want you to sense the, the smell around you. And when you breathe out, I want you to wiggle your toes. So breathe in and sense the smells. Breathe out and wiggle your toes. Feel the, the taste in your mouth. Take a deep breath and feel your, the taste. Breathe out and flex your spine. Roll your shoulders. And on the next breath, I want you to stretch your arms up and above your head. And then when you breathe out, I want you to feel with your fingertips on your clothes and your skin. Breathe in. Read out. And I want you to, on the next breath, I want you to listen to a, a sound outside of my voice. So breathe in and feel your lungs to its breaking point and keep the lungs filled for a few seconds. And then breathe out through your nose and your ears and listen to a sound outside of my voice. Breathe in. And out. And listen. And then I want you to remember what the room around you look, looks like. I want you to pick an object that you focus your eyes on when you open your, open your eyes. So uh, you can get used to the distance and the contrast. So remember what the room looks like and breathe in. Mm -hmm. 
Choose your object and breathe out. Open your eyes when you feel ready. And focus your eyes on the object. You can touch it. Maybe smell it. <laughs> if you feel like it. And come back to the here and now. Mm. I really love starting every morning and ending every night with that meditation. But I want you guys to know that with practice it doesn't take so long it's like uh because when i do it on my own it just takes about three minutes or something like one minute to clear with the purple energy <laughs> another minute to because that's the order i do it when i do it on my own i clear with the purple energy and then well i follow my intuition so it 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 depends, but most often I clear with the purple energy. So I receive the purple energy and then I release the purple energy to the Earth Mother and then I listen to her heart, filling myself up with her energy until it reaches the crown and then I receive the, the bright light um, and receive the, the Sky Father's energy all the way down to my feet and my roots and I let those mix in the heart meet in the heart and then i come back to the here and now <laughs> and somewhere uh, after i have cleared and released i do this so i take my my abalone shell i take a little stick and i blow out everything i need to release for the day and if i'm gonna use some kind of uh, like plant medicine like cow or um gonna do something else that needs me to be like open and receptive i release whatever needs to be released for me in order to re receive that energy and that medicine and if i'm not gonna work with anything special i just uh, release whatever needs to be released so i usually just go like i uh, i release everything that I need to release in this moment, here and now, a oh. whole. I blew it into my stick and I light the stick on a candle. And today I, I choose the Thurisas, the Tush candle. And then I let the stick burn completely out in my shell because the stick contains everything I need to release so it's important it burn all the way out if it doesn't burn completely I take it as a sign that there's something I'm not ready to release or that I might might have to reconsider my how I formulate the, the sentence maybe uh, if I want to release something special, maybe if I had a dream and I want to understand the dream and I start by releasing everything I need to understand the dream and uh, it doesn't burn it completely out and maybe I have to change and uh, blow out everything I need to blow out to uh, receive the message of the dream. It can, you know, it can come down to how I build a sentence around it or the or the feeling because you don't have to make it up you don't have to use words you can use images or emotions you can you can just release emotions into into the stick and burn it if I wake up feeling like anxious I can release the anxious energy um, sometimes I wake up feel a bit stressed uh, if I had a stressful dream or if my partner is stress, stressed and I feel his energy uh, before I wake up, 
I can like he can leave me with that energy and I'm like this isn't even mine then I'm and if you still feel it after I've cleared my energy I can because it's it's like things happen in two steps like I receive the energy maybe it's stressful or anxious or whatever negative energy from another person and then I if I if I release it quick enough I can just I feel it and I oh no this isn't mine and then I release it but if it's been a while or like if if it's uh, me coming just out of a dream or something like that then it can be that I I have taken on the emotion so it's not just the energy anymore it's it, I've taken on the emotion of the energy and I need to release that because that can fester in my mind or my body and because there's so much stuff from other people that especially empaths uh, we don't just feel the emotions of others we take on the emotions and the stress and the pain and we need and we need to release it from several levels of consciousness or un- or or below consciousness subconscious that's the word subconsciousness uh, because it might like fester in our mind and our body and we need to take that into account when we release stuff. We can't just release an energy and feel and be like, oh, it's done. And then think that everything is left is our own. Uh, it is our own, but it's be- it's maybe it's because we've taken it on um, on a subconscious level. And we need to release whatever has become of that, like a thought pattern or a behavior. Because if it's like, if you're an empath growing up, and you uh, receive uh, energy from other people all the way through your childhood, and they manifest and f- they fester and manifest in your mind and your body. You can grow up with other people's thoughts, pa- thought patterns, their behavior patterns, their yeah, opinions, or whatever. Um, and uh, you need to release that on a deeper level. But since it isn't your own it's most often easier uh it's not easy it's just easier to release something that was never your own that you just held on to rather than releasing something that completely is your own because it's a difference if you say you will receive some negative energy during your childhood that is manifested in a low self-esteem so if the self-esteem is truly yours you have to work through it. If the self-esteem has come of someone else's low self-esteem, maybe you had like a caregiver that has had low self-esteem and being like a people pleaser or whatever to to uplift themselves. And you've received that energy of the low self-esteem and the people pleasing, but it's not really yours. You don't really think that about yourself. You've just watched someone lived around someone that has had that for their entire life and uh, you've taken it on it's not if it's not yours it's easier to release and let go of than it is if it's truly yours like it's the difference if you grown up around a, a people pleaser and the pe- and the person that had have has had low self-esteem and taken it on versus if you uh, grown up with a person that has given you a low self-esteem because they have put you down and uh, didn't want you to feel worthy of anything or worthy of your self-image or whatever. So you see, it's it's a different kind of depths depths uh, around it. So, uh, but everything can be released and let go of if we do it in the if you do it deep enough and. Um, Sometimes we just have to let go of the stuff around something so that it can be, it can be, it can come back. You know, we have to maybe let go of thought patterns and uh, uh, energies that are surrounding like a core of something that is our own. Maybe we do think highly of ourselves and love ourselves to uh, like deep, deep, deep within, um, but it's been buried, you know, then the the low self-esteem uh that surrounds the the self-love isn't maybe isn't yours but it hides the self-love so if we can release all of that surrounding the self-love then we can 
dig, dig the self-love out and let it perpetrate and let it um, win, <laughs> uh, we can say. And uh, yeah, so it depends on, you know, where, where does it come from? Um, and that's why I love like holistic medicine and shamanism and um, this holistic view that we have in shamanism. Because if we, we need to find the reason, we need to find um, what's, the, what's at our deepest core to really know how to help and how to heal. So yeah. So uh, I did promise you a rune for the week. So I'm going to do that. This is my cloth. This is the side I usually draw my runes on. And this is the side where I have the map of the world. <laughs> Weird map, right? Uh, it's a map of the nine worlds of the Nordic. Yes, the tree of life, I would say. The inner and outer cosmos. Great. Why did I put that one up? I need to put this one up. Okay, so I'm gonna... I don't know if you're gonna hear me sounding the runes because this mic is good, but I'm not good at it. <laughs> so I don't know if uh, it comes through or if it's just considered background noise. So if I go silent, it's just because my microphone has a, an opinion of its own. But I hope you can hear it. Okay. And I just remember we're going to close our viracocious. So we have our viracocious open. And we... So put your hands down by your sides. And then close your eyes and find the edges. Like the way down below. And pick them up. I usually visualize like golden curtains that I can lift up. Lift above my head. So lift them. Lift the all of the golden energy above your head back to back to this ball of light and energy and when you hold it we're going to take the new energy that's inside of this bubble because this bubble contains the um the lack of or the absence that's the word the absence of whatever we have released and let go of and then the presence of the new energy that we have uh, received. So we take all of this new information and pull it down towards our crown chakra. And when our hand touches our crown chakra, we breathe it in. We move our hands to the forehead and breathe out and feel the energy manifesting in our minds. And then we bring the hands down to our heart, feeling the energy manifesting or reprogramming our heart and then taking the hands down to our, to our belly closing the viracocha, closing the bubble and feeling the energy manifesting in our stomach which in the Kira medicine is the energy center of doing of uh, uh, directing our energy and working towards something and all of these need to be aligned. And they are now. Okay. Back to the runes. Utu sha sreid ken gi fu vinya hagal naudis yara pertra iu algi sul tir bjarka madur lagu ingo da lages 
Hutu shall sreed ken gifu vinya hogal naudis yora pertra iu algi sulti bjarka madr lagu ing udal dages fe. Hutu shall sreed ken gifu vinya hogal naudis yora pertra iu algi sulti bjarka Madur lagu ing odal dages fe. Okay, so rune for the week for us. Only for me and you here on YouTube for the coming week. So I got two runes in my hands. The first rune is Vinya or Vunyo. And the second rune is Bjarka or Berkana. And they both came upright. I hold them in my hands to sense the message. Because that's what I do. I, I use my intuition to feel the energies of the runes and give you the message. Okay, so these runes show me a picture of us uh, like dancing on the earth barefoot. That the message is to celebrate the Earth Mother and to celebrate the season that we're in. So instead of, uh, especially if if it's like a rainy or a dull season where you are and where I am, we're gonna focus on celebrating the seasons and this season in, uh, and not focusing on like the bad emotions the bad feelings it gives us because here in sweden it, it can be quite dark it can be uh like almost a gray like everything is just gray depending on if there's snow or not and sort of thing so just celebrate the season, be joyful. So Vunjo, Vinja talks about being joyful and Berkana, Bjarka talks about the Earth Mother. So celebrate her seasons and do it, um, do it alone or together with other people. Uh, it doesn't have to be like an event or something. Just when you walk outside, just breathe in the air and feel the Earth Mother in every breath you take, in every step you take. In everything around you that surrounds you feel her in your heart and feel the joy of the seasons and if you don't have seasons where you are, are celebrate that celebrate whatever happen is happening where you are so thank you to Vunyo and Burkana Vinya and Bjarka thank you runes and that's it from me today and i will see you in english i will see you in, a, in another week when we celebrate the third sun wait so until then walk in beauty and shingling <laughs>